Sure. And Reg Baker, who asked me not to introduce him too extensively, is going to deliver this to you. Thanks. Not, my turn. Ah, okay. All right. I asked him not to say too much because I have to go chair the next session at 2 o'clock. Um, let, me, let me begin with, um, to sort of personalize all this, um, I retired um, about three years ago. Um, and um, this was after having a career of about 30 years in uh, two different mid-sized um, research organizations as a, uh, as a COO. And like a lot of people when they retire, um, the first question you have to deal with is, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And, you know, what do I want to be when I grow up? All of that stuff. And I did a bunch of different things, um, tried a little of this, a little of that. And one of the things that sort of came front and center for me was um, an interest in, given all of what we're seeing going on in the industry, all the stuff that you're going to hear talked about here over two and a half days, how does that change what it is that we should be teaching people, um, people who are already in the industry and need to somehow um, change um, their careers in order to adapt to everything we're seeing, as well as new people coming into the industry who need an overview of what market research is all about um, so that they can take the skill sets that they have and apply them in a much different sort of, in, uh, of environment. And um, you know, I happened to do a, uh, organize a, um, a session, a conference really, at Michigan State University on this general topic of educating the researcher of the future. Um, and in that thing, we, we came close to sort of defining what the problem is, but I'm not sure we really came up with anything by way of clear solutions. And then um, as of October of last year, I became executive director of the Marketing Research Institute International, which basically we developed the content for the University of Georgia online courses, the uh, principles of market research. So this is, this is a personal thing for me in a lot of ways, but it's also a plea, if you will. People have ideas. Um, by all means, share them with me, because at some level, we're still trying to figure this out. How does this need to evolve um, going forward? You know, here is, you'll hear a lot about this in the, in the next um, two and a half days. Um, lots of people have lots of different ways of talking about it, but here's one way I can see of it. This is the transition we're looking at, a, a transition from data being scarce and expensive to being plentiful, relatively inexpensive, a movement away from asking questions to learn about behavior, and more observing and more listening, um, less analyzing individual data sets, uh, more synthesizing, as, as we just heard, across um, multiple data sets. Moving away from reporting as fact-telling to reporting more as storytelling, and doing projects which are less about tactics for specific products and more about um, company strategy. So all that's kind of neat, but you know, think of this as me and thinking, you know, okay, so what then, you know, or you really sitting there thinking, what is it that I need to learn so that I can continue to be a contributing member of, of the market research or the insights profession, as we like to call it? And this really comes down to putting some definition initially behind who is the market researcher of tomorrow? You know, what does he or she look like? How is that job different from the job that many of the people in this room are probably doing today? And in the course of trying to answer that, I was fortunate in that a lot of people who are much smarter than I am have thought about this. Um, and one of those people that caught my eye right away is Joan Lewis, who was um, basically ran the marketing research function at Procter & Gamble for many years. And uh, when Joan was asked, is social media going to replace surveys, her response was, we need to be methodologically agnostic. But the point being that we shouldn't think about one way of doing research, that the particular method we may choose for a piece of research has a lot to do with what the business problem is uh, that we are studying. So social media may be a better solution in, in one instance, but a survey may be a better instance in still another um, uh, instance. And that reminded me of something really you know, ancient, way back in time, 2004, a great book, Smith and Fletcher, The Art and Science of Interpreting Marketing Research Evidence, in which they said this, that we can no longer restrict ourselves to working with single, reasonably robust sources of customer opinion. The point being, there are no really good sources of opinion on any particular issue. And we need to be thinking about multiple methods. Even in 2004, arguing, you need to be thinking about multiple methods because all of them in some sense are flawed. And by taking a multiple methods approach, in principle, um, you get closer to the truth. 
And then, just this week, while I was thinking about this present, I guess that would be last week, wouldn't it? I was thinking about this presentation, and in the current issue of Research World, the SMR publication, Finn Robin, who's um, director general, had this description, which I think is as good as anything I've seen in terms of a discussion or a description, if you will, of the market researcher of the future. Individuals who are able to crystallize a business problem, integrate market and customer data drawn from a variety of sources, and then explain the business solution in a compelling and engaging way. And I don't know whether you think about that's what you're doing today or not. Uh, but I think this is clearly uh, kind of where, uh, where things are headed in terms of what this notion of the insight profession um, is, is really all about. So if that's the future, then it seems to me pretty clear that the current methods we use for market research and education and training is broken. Because we're really teaching people some very detailed skills, and we're not really teaching them the big picture that we need to, to, to teach them. We're sort of trying to build expertise brick by brick, a course here, a course there. You come here, you hear about some method, you think, oh gosh, I'm going to go back and I'm going to try this out uh, in my company. And it's not the sort of fundamental thing that one needs to be thinking about in terms of the future. Because what happens in this industry is that very few people grow up wanting to be market researchers. They kind of fall into it. And most of the quote unquote education and training that is done is basically done by employers. And what do employers do? They bring smart people in, they assign them to this project or to this department, and they train them to do that. And they do that over and over every day. Um, but when it's all said and done, what people are learning to do is what to do, how to do this particular function, but they're not really learning why they do it, you know, why it's important. And in a way, it's the parable of the blind man and the elephant. So you have lots of people who understand one piece of the elephant, but don't see the whole elephant, don't really understand the whole process that they're working within. And that's fine as long as things don't change. But now we're in a situation where things are changing and changing pretty rapidly. And so we need to change the way in which um, we school people. You know, um, Socrates said education is the lighting of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. Point being that what he's trying to do here is to, um, to say, look, we need to focus on knowledge, we need to focus on ideas, we need to focus on teaching people how to think and how to apply that knowledge in a variety of situations, which is a much different thing than training people to do something, the same thing, over and over. Now, there's another dimension to this in which I get to use my favorite Lyndon Johnson quote, and that is that you not only need to be able to understand these new methods, you need to be able to look at them and say, you know, are they any good? Is, is what they're telling me true? You know, and, and the way in which all this was done, this data was developed, is it really saying what it is that I think it's saying or what it claims to be saying? And that's a really tough thing. And again, that's the sort of thing, it seems to me, that you learn through a process of education, through communication of ideas, through learnings which are focused on the application of knowledge rather than simply learning how to do something day after day, doing it a specific way. Now, this is something that um, was presented, actually, at the Michigan State um, uh, um, Conference. And it represents, really, I think, mostly some thinking by Simon Chadwick and company um, about you know, what the market research firm of the future looks like. And the idea is that you have all of these specialists right, in all of these categories, which you can read there. I won't read those to you. Um, and you know, that's really the insights professional kind of sits in the middle of this. So this idea that we all have to learn how to do big data, or predictive analytics, or social media analytics, all this stuff, no, that's not really what's required. You really need, as an insight professional, to be able to look at a business problem, draw on the specialists you need from within your organization or with whom you have some sort of relationships to put together a package of methodologies and data sources that you think are really going to get at the issues that underlie the business problem that you're trying to study. And so the question is, how do we prepare people for this role? And I think there are three things that we need to do. 
First, we need to more and more emphasize breadth of knowledge rather than depth of expertise. So we're not teaching people so much anymore how to do things as we're trying to expose people as broadly as we can. Somebody used once um, told, used the metaphor of a fork, right? Reasonably deep on each of the methodologies out there, but not what we're doing at the moment is going super deep, mostly to turn, teach people how to do surveys um, or to do focus groups. So that's number one. Number two, I think we need to be teaching people frameworks. This gets to the chicken shit stuff, you know, and LBJ's words, right? I mean, I firmly believe there's a set of principles that define good research regardless of what method it is that you're using. And that we need to provide people the frameworks that they can use to look at the research, evaluate it in a systematic way, and decide what its weak points are. And finally, there's this issue of synthesis, which we just talked a little bit about. You know, there's the old saying that if you have one GPS, you will always know exactly where you are, but if you have two, you will never be completely sure. And once you talk about multiple methods, you have this issue that you could well get conflicting signals from one data source versus another. And so you have to have some capacity, back to this framework idea, to look at it, understand what those differences are, reconcile them, so that you're making sense of the whole picture, and then carrying that forward as the actual narrative that you want to, um, to deliver to your client. So I now have to go and chair the next session. If you have any questions or any comments you'd like to make to me, I'm really interested in what people think on this topic. And so this is where you can get in touch with me. And thanks very much for listening.